Lisa. Larry Tesler, I, I believe you, you took Steve on a tour of, of uh, Xerox PARC and showed him some technology that became important. I wonder if you could tell us about that, that tour. Well, it wasn't a tour of the physical facility. It was a tour of the software. Uh, it was part of that d demonstration. Uh, Xerox ha was facing a lot of comp competition from Asian companies in copiers when their patents expired. And one thing they found was that they had a very high manufacturing cost, and they were really having trouble competing with the, these new forces in the market. At the same time, they had Xerox Park, the Palo Alto Research Center, developing very exciting technologies, including the Ethernet graphical user interface with Windows and, and uh, uh, improved mice from what existed before. And they started worrying that they would not be able to manufacture those cheaply enough when they moved into that market. So they looked around and saw that Apple was cranking out Apple IIs for really cheap and selling lots of them. And they thought, well, we should partner with a company like Apple and they'll make our machines for us, something like that. They had some kind of idea of that type. And so some business development people came out from the East Coast to Park and Apple, and when they got to Apple, they made a deal where in exchange for various business arrangements, uh, distribution and future discussions of manufacturing and so on, uh, Apple would sell them stock which was a very appealing thing because it was clear Apple was going to have a very successful IPO. So it was either a million shares or a million dollars worth of stock that they got. And in exchange, though, Steve Jobs required that they get information, a rev disclosure, about everything cool going on at Xerox Park. Good bargain. And uh, nobody checked that's with that's the that's Park people it. first, but. <laughs> The business development people signed the deal. And um, so there were a number of visits. I was involved in a couple of them. One was executives visiting and meeting with some of us, trying to just get information out of us or an agenda for how to get the information out of us. And that was a little bit of a tense meeting. But I remember one point, Steve was pacing the room, trying not to be in charge of the meeting because he was not the CEO of the company. Mike Scott was. And at one point, he just said, stop, 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 stop. Let's stop this discussion. We need to tell them about the Lisa. And all the Apple people kind of froze. Come on, come on, we need to tell them about the Lisa. This conversation's going to go nowhere. So we all perked up, you know, because it was about us disclosing to them, not them disclosing to us. But finally, they threw up their hands and said, OK, tell them about the Lisa. So somebody told us a little bit about the Lisa, which at that time had n did not have a graphical user interface. But it was powerful enough to do the kinds of things that they thought we were doing. And uh, the next thing I remember was another meeting where apparently there'd been a demo in between, but they weren't satisfied with the demo. They knew there was a lot more than what we were showing them. There were a lot of people at Park that didn't want to show them everything. And in fact, we all felt like we didn't want to show them everything, but I was one of those who felt we should show them more. And, but there were people that wanted to hold back everything we could. So they arranged uh, a new set of demos where more people came. Bill was there, uh, John Couch, Mike Scott, uh, and obviously Steve. Uh, Jeff Raskin was there, a couple other people. And uh, the room was pretty full. And there were about two or three of us from Park in the room at a time, one person sitting at a computer giving a demonstration, and the other people kind of in, waiting their turn or observing. So during that demo, uh, Steve again got very excited. And he was pacing around the room and occasionally looking at the screen. He was mostly just looking and then reacting and taking it all in and trying to process it. Process it. And uh, at one point, he said, you're still not showing us everything. And the meeting paused, and there were some phone calls, and OK, we're going to show you more. <laughs> so I gave my demo, and Dan Ingalls gave a, a demo of small talk. And uh, they started asking us a lot of questions. Bill and uh, Bruce Daniels was there, too, from MIT. He joined Apple. 
the technical people were all asking us questions, and we were answering the questions. And frankly, I was amazed. I had looked into Apple earlier, a couple of years before, because someone tried to get me to work there. And I found these people that were homebrew computer club kind of hackers. Suddenly, there were all these computer scientists in the room, and they were asking really good questions. So I got a completely different view about what Apple was like from that meeting. But Jobs was there going, what is going on here? You're sitting on a gold mine. Why aren't you doing something with this technology? You could change the world. And his buddies who were trying to you know, arrange a negotiation of some kind were trying to quiet him down. You know? <laughs> Don't be so excited. But he was, it was really clear to him that we were never really going to do anything with this. By, mean, by that I mean you know, the kinds of revolutionary things that he was envisioning. Uh, the irony was, when they left, we'd still shown them only like 1% of what Park was doing. But it was enough that they got really excited and decided they were going to retarget the Lisa to be something like what they had seen in terms of graphical user interface. They fell in love with the mouse. And uh, that changed everything. And seven months after that, I was working at Apple.